Use the door code and then press the lock button to either lock it or open it. It will be the same as the door code. You'll have two keys, yellow key, yellow key will be your door key, the other will be to the storage shed which is in the backyard and therefore all your storage. Enter the back side yard here which is yours to use as you wish and it's going to be in the shed or barn over here. Uh, you could technically access um, the side door under the porch as well, uh, which actually stays a little bit more temperate um, as far as uh, heat or cold uh, than the shed here. But you're welcome to store whatever you like in there. Uh, you do have the key in the lockbox if you wanted to lock either door. So, outdoor light overhead porch light obviously indoor light with uh, contrast and the indoor fan which I often leave going all day to circulate air. The view from above so all the plants uh, are dried so you don't have to worry about watering anything um, the stove is actually just decorative so I'm going to ask not to use that it's not going to be a heater or anything like that Getting up or down the stairs, always face the stairs. In other words, when you're coming down, um, you know, turn around so that you're facing the stairwell coming down. You will have a motion sensor light here that should trip on. A motion sensor light that'll trip on. USB ports as well for charging phones, etc. Uh, the AC has a little remote control, and right now it's just turn to auto on, auto off at like 67 degrees. In the winter time, if you wanted to set it to fan mode just to get some fresh air, you can do so. I'm storing laundry here, which is for me sufficient for about a week. And every week I just run down to the laundry, which is literally a block away um, up the street and then take a left at the little convenience store. Um, and it's, you know, maybe eight bucks to do my laundry once a week. Use these three drawers for whatever clothes you need, as well as if you do have a pull-out drawer here you can use. Is the secondary heater. You can use the remote, which is actually handy just to be stuck on there. And obviously right now it's set to fan. Just set the temp at heat. That's really all there is to it, is it's got a heat function and a fan function. Um, just make sure there's nothing right next to it. Other than that, it works really, really well to start heating things up immediately for you. This is an essential oil infuser. Just use the little uh, cup here, fill it with water, pour it in, no, no uh, taller than the line. Add, you know, four or five drops of whichever um, essential oil. There's a variety here that you enjoy. You can use the remote here. It's got functions for one hour, two hour, intermittent, up top is continuous. Um, there's also a light function if you want that. You can also use the little buttons here um, and it'll just mist out over the day. Extra garbage liner, paper towels, cleaners, uh, kitchen towels, coffee stuff, tea, a couple level tools as well as your silverware. Needing any of these uh, Tupperware type dishes or these extra spices, feel free to move them around as needed or even place them in the um, brown storage bin outside if you need to. The TV will take about two minutes to connect to the Wi-Fi each time you turn it on. So. Just gotta be a little patient. Uh, if you want, you can switch over to live TV if you wanna hear some um, live TV for two minutes or so while you're waiting for the internet connection. To work the radiator heater, it's portable. You can bring it out to the living room more if you needed it. But basically on for the settings, three obviously high. You're gonna make sure in the winter it's on heat. It'll take about two plus hours to heat the inside to a comfortable mid 60s and uh, most of the time so in that it's not too hot as it's pretty well insulated in here you can turn it to two and that's a good steady temperature in the winter just make sure it's not right next to anything plastic or even the side of the wall or the stairwell I'd say it needs about four to six inches between anything so that uh, the radiator isn't directly in contact with anything that could be melted or heated to cause trouble. 
obviously the kitchen light here. These two extension cords, one goes towards uh, the toaster oven, which has some pretty straightforward settings I can show you. For the fridge door, this thing's open just fine. When you're closing it, you do want to both lift the handle and then kind of pick in the door base so that it forms a seal at the base here. There's a little bit of an issue where uh, the bottom piece here just doesn't close fully and seal against the door unless you give it a little uh, nudge with your foot at the base while lifting at the handle. It should be pretty obvious whether it closed correctly or not. The vent for the kitchen is hidden here. You do have to kind of turn on there. I like to keep it on here whenever I'm cooking or doing anything that's going to have any kind of odors and it vents out really, really well. The below functions pretty well for dry goods, storage of any kind of foods um, that you'll need. You might inherit some cans of food from other folks. Uh, if you don't want them, you know, and you need the room, you can certainly toss them. For the toaster oven, the power button's here. You can see there's different settings. You can also have a light on, off, convection heating on, off, time, temperature, and then again, there's different settings you can use. You're going to notice there's an upper tray, which frankly heats faster than the lower tray. And then a, a drip tray. You might want to put some foil down on that if you're going to do anything like cooking any kind of meat or vegetables or things that would drip. This could be uh, taken out and uh, scraped or cleaned as needed as well occasionally. And there's an instruction book that will live in the drawer below for um, any kind of operational functions. Um, it does function as an air fryer and a um, kind of a toaster oven. So you do have the same outlet that the radiator is plugged into if you need an additional uh, outlet here in the kitchen for um, you know uh, the hot plate or another cooking. When using the hot plate, uh, all the way left is on. Or you should see the light light up. Uh, in this case, all the way right is on. And then uh, dial on the left from zero to max. Um, it heats up con conduction right here on top. Obviously, you just got to make sure you shut it off right after use. And it's going to be uh, hot for a while, so you just let it cool down before moving it back. Trivet here by the cutting board in case you do need to have a place to set a hot dish. I do recommend running the hot plate or the microwave if on this side, or the hot plate and the toaster oven, uh, but not both if they're on the other side since each side is one circuit and they both draw a lot of amps. You could uh, possibly blow one of the circuit breakers, um, which isn't the end of the world. There's a way to reset that, but uh, it'd be annoying. You'll notice there's a little bit of a drip tray down below where the water heater is. If you could just check that occasionally, just discard the water that is in there. If it's got a little bit of an overflow, so overflow um, to catch any pressure from the water heater. When the water heater is set to high, like I have it in the winter, um, there can be a little bit of that. So you might want to check that every week or so. Just um, replace it right under that little outlet tube. The door is on rails, so it's just going to slide to and fro and it should slip behind the fridge. You can always move the fridge a little bit over if it's not in the right position. This is how to operate the incinerating, incinerating toilet. Just make sure there's always a liner in the bowl each and every use. Uh, you'd go ahead and use it. Solid waste, liquid waste. Uh, so use the foot pedal to depress opens uh, into the chamber and then press here to start the incinerating cycle. Each time replace with a new liner, simply place it into the chamber. And you're good to go. In order to empty the chamber, you basically remove use the lever to drop the pan. You remove
remove the contents basically by lifting out the inner bowl. Basically you can just replace the contents that are in the bowl with the new bowl once it's all cooled down. You can use the metal spatula to scrape the contents into the garbage can. That you can scrape directly into the garbage. You could obviously do this into the inside garbage and then just transfer the contents as well. Water's already on at the spigot. In order to use the hose, you just turn this one in the up position. And then, depending on which setting you need, this is going to be defaulted to shower, I hope. You can rinse the pan out, I let it soak overnight, and I simply dump the water. And then, if you want to Rinse it with another round and then dump that, uh, and then your pan is clean. You just keep the spare ash pan here, uncover it until it's ready for replacement with the next one. Extra bowl liners here. If it gets low, please just uh, inform me via text and I can order more to the address. You also have uh, extra everything you need as far as garbage, cans, batteries for the door, sponges, as well as toilet paper, paper towels, shower liners, um, excuse me, the uh, shower stall um, covers on the bottom, which are machine washable. You also have an extra set of towels, sheets, blanket covers, as well as bathroom mat in the uh, container here outside, which is covered and weatherproof. Just leave the spigot on all the way to the left, as that's also going to be the main water supply for the house. It's an inline filter at the source or as it enters the tiny house, so uh, it is filtered. Just make sure the water supply line for the house is in the inline or on position.